Hello, everyone. This is Pino Trogo from San Francisco State University. Again, this is the introduction to drawing for designers class. And today we're going to work on ellipses, cylinders, and uh, the cubes. Yes, and we're going to intersect cylinders and cubes. So this is actually uh, three little assignments into one video. Um, now, before, let's see. Before we start though, I'm going to talk about very quickly and you can skip forward in the recording if you, if you know how to do this already very well, the title block, okay? For those, um, for those of you who may have joined the class a little bit later. Um, so just to get into the habit of doing the title block always, I'm just gonna quickly show you again how to do it um, freehand. I, uh, I take a board, or in this case, a, a pad, and I am going to just be careful that I don't cut myself and to avoid cutting myself, what I did was I took a bone folder and I kind of dulled and I kind of bent back the edge of the, of the paper I did on all sides, okay? So again, you've seen this video already, but I'm just gonna do it for the benefit of those who might not have seen it yet. Um, so I'm gonna do a half inch and let's see. Yeah, finch on all sides. Um, I shouldn't rush too much because if I if I do that, it doesn't look good. Um, and again, you use your your middle finger actually as a as a stop guide stop towards against the paper, um, against the board. And that's how you get a quick. Super quick title block. Um, it's a little shallow, so it's I'm having a hard time getting my finger under it, but a board would be better, like a piece of plywood or a thicker, you know, perhaps a book. Okay. And I'm using a pretty thick, soft pencil in general, though, probably you don't want to do that. Uh, this is a little harder because I'm further away. And then um, I've noticed most of you are drawing the lettering lines really dark. Um, try to make those lighter and also pretty thin. That way you can make your lettering smaller. Okay. Now I'm going to go over actually the um, information and most of you uh, got it more or less 90% right. Um, but the part about, let's see, somewhere here. Oh, no, I can't find what it says. All right. Okay. The course number, the teacher's name. So, and I think I've added SFSU in the previous video. So that would be, okay, let's just say this is, um, okay, what is this number? I think it's number seven. Uh, that would be maybe dry ellipses. Okay. Then we're going to put my name. I'll say your name. Um, then I think we're going to say maybe SFSU. Then this to 20, and my just my last name, not my first name. By the way, it's OGU, not um, EGU, EGO. <laughs> so it's Trogo instead of Trugo. So Trogo. Um, and then I guess uh, this would be the day. So this is now going to actually be due on the 23rd, I believe. So um, I like to actually put the day first, the European way. Okay, so that's it. So there you go. That took maybe five minutes, I don't know. Um, and um, you might want to do this at the end, right? Because if you don't like your drawing, maybe you want to do a new one and then do this at the end. And it doesn't matter sometimes if, if the stuff goes you know, into your border. Um, Okay, now before I actually start with the assignment, I'm going to do one more thing. 
which is show you how to sharpen a pencil if you don't have a sharpener of any kind. Um, can't find now my little sharpener. Let's see, I can't see it in now, but um, I do have those hand ones and even the nice one for these pencils and even this really nice one, this electric one. Um, so if you can get yourself a good electric sharpener for pencils, of course, for, um, for mechanical, mechanical pencils, we'll see later, you wouldn't be able to use this. Um, but let's assume you don't have this, you know, you ran out of batteries or something. So how would you sharpen your pencil? I'm gonna pick one that it's not so sharp, maybe this one, uh, the white one. Okay, well, actually this is already sharp, but I'll pretend. I'll pretend it's not by killing it I'm like that. How about that? Um, so anyway, the way you sharpen your pencil, oh, by the way, get this knife, don't get, okay? It's the Alpha, it's made in Japan, Alpha 80. I forget the number, um, but don't use exacto knives because they're dangerous and they're not very useful. So this is nice because you can, this is a required tool. You'll need this to do, um, to do the Q project. Um, whether you choose the simpler version or the more complex version, you need this knife. It's nice because you can snap the blades like this. Now I'm going to sacrifice one, even though it's brand new. Um, and this is also, of course, in the tools, in the tools uh, video. Okay. So the way you sharpen is that you can't just go like this because this way you have no control. Your arm is too much force to, um, to control what you're doing. So instead, what you're, what you're actually doing is actually it's you're balancing between um, pushing with your right hand, if you're right-handed, pushing also with your thumb like this and kind of counteracting each other. Okay. So it's almost like a more a push with your thumb on my left hand here, uh, because that's the only way. Oh, wait, this is a white pencil. Actually, I don't, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I want you to see the, I want you to see the pencil. Um, so if I go up to the camera, it's gonna be a little out of focus, but maybe that's okay. Um, so when you sharpen it, you see I'm pushing it with the thumb. It's, it's kind of this control thing. You can't, if I go like this, I have no control. I mean, I might get lucky, but so instead, you could just go like this, so I'm, I'm pushing forward, let's see, yeah. I'm pushing forward the blade all with my left hand and I'm, and I'm also pulling the pencil backwards a little bit. So it's, and also I'm pushing a little bit with my right hand, okay? So once you get it to a good point where you have a, you know, pretty nice, then you can do it kind of freehand like this. So it's it's more, um, yeah, free, right? Because now I'm, I'm putting very little pressure and it's just the weight of the blade that's getting that. Um, now this is very good when you want to relax. It's kind of a little meditative exercise. And in all classical meaning, old school drawing classes, you would have to do this before you do anything else. Um, so there we go, pretty nice. And then if you want to really make it sharp, you can go like this, you just roll it a little bit. Okay, let's see what we got. That doesn't do much, okay. Um, so that's how you sharpen the pencil if you don't have anything else to sharpen it with. Okay, uh, do I dump this? I want to get rid of the paper because I'm trying to keep the uh, my stack here always the same height. So my focus is always the same because I hit it when the camera adjusts focuses. So I keep the focus always fixed as well as the uh, exposure. So sometimes when I come closer, it's out of focus, but that's all right. Okay, enough talk. Let's see if I can get 
ellipses going. All right. Oh, another thing before I forget, please, could you name your files when you upload them with this format that's on page two of the syllabus, okay? And I'm gonna have to maybe ask everyone that they be saved as PDFs because sometimes I can't see them in the in the interface on the on the iLearn thing, and it's and then I have to download them, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All right. So um, let's see. Anything here? Yeah. All right. So ellipses, um, there is a lot of ellipses stuff in many other videos. Um, but let me see if I can draw an ellipse. So the way you draw an ellipse is you, now of course, I mean, if I had an easel here, I would be drawing it like this, right? So what you wanna do is extend your arm as much. Yeah. Try to, um, okay, so don't, of course, Try to extend it as much as you can so it's more relaxed. You yeah. can't see it anymore. And then work from your uh, elbow and shoulder, not from your wrist. Okay, don't do this because that's not going to work. Although we'll see when we do very squat ellipses. Um, squat or fat? I think fat. Um, you'll need to be able to do that. Okay, so what you want to do is I'm using actually the palm of your, of the bottom of my hand here as a guide, although in the in this book from Basil, they said to not even touch, but I, I like to touch it. And that's why you want the pencil to be long because if the pencil were very short, um, in order to, for you to touch the paper, you would have to extend it like this and then the pencil would fall inside your hand, right? So if it's long, it rests nicely on the upper part of your hand and you can use this as your guide right here. Okay, so what I like to do, uh, I mean, an ellipse is really, well, it's a kind of a strange version of a circle where it's not equal. Um, it's kind of an oval, it's an ellipse. And the thing about them is that they're perfectly symmetrical. So the left and the right, right, as well as the top and the bottom are exactly the same. So that's what you have to aim at. Okay, don't shade them, okay? I actually, I wanna do this just to show how the parts are the same. Um, but before I do that, for our purposes, we're saying that an ellipse is basically what we see when we take a circle and we kind of go at an angle a little bit, right? So this might be you know, the top of a glass or something else. Um, and that's an ellipse right there. Um, in reality, it's actually a little bit in perspective. So this is actually a little bit smaller than that. And if you recall in an earlier video, if I have a circle, right, inside the square, if I have that, and I'm exaggerating now, if I have a, a circle now in perspective here, you'll see that immediately um, the back part of that circle would be smaller. So that, so a real perspective is not an ellipse, but for us, it's very useful to use ellipses because it's, because they're symmetric and it's easier to do them instead of trying to do that, right? Um, the, the change is so minor that it doesn't matter, right? So just move, basically you wanna move this direction, okay? Left and right, like a pendulum. And then what you wanna do is just do a dry run first, don't draw and then draw. Okay, so you see what I'm doing. I'm just, for all practical purposes, the most common ellipse you will need will be one that's inside two squares like this side by side. Okay, and that's the one that fits more or less in our 30, 30 um, isometric view. When you take this, it will look like two, two to one and a half. Okay, so I don't wanna make this first section too long, but, but just practice making them shallow, making them not as shallow. And again, the medium is the easiest to do. When you try to make them, um, I'm gonna use a lot of paper now. When you try to make them, I 
call them squad. I guess they are squad because I'm thinking a circle. So it's more like a squat circle. Now, notice that as you, as you try to make it a circle, there is no way that you can hold your pencil flat like this, right? There's just no way. So what I do actually, if I try to draw a circle, which is a kind of a weird ellipse, um, I actually use my little finger here and I use that as a guide. Now I'd show it from the side, but you won't see it when I'm actually doing it. So that gives me a little bit of a support and that's what you need if you're trying to do an ellipse that's actually quite fat and kind of close to a circle, which is harder, much harder to do, see, than these ellipses where I just, you know, go down with my hand and I just draw them like this. Okay, so just draw a bunch and draw the axis maybe to see if you hit it, you know, uh, symmetrical. Um, one thing you have to remember, okay, and this will be part of the second part, which is the... Um, with the cylinder, that if you're representing something that is um, sitting on the ground like that, okay? Now I can't show it because of the camera is looking straight down. Um, well, maybe I can show it like this. No, not really. It's really hard to show. Anyway, this would be like sitting on the desk. That's how my, you might see it, okay? Whenever that's the case, whenever it's something sitting down, your lips is always gonna be, like this, okay, it's never gonna be like that, okay, or like this, okay, which is to say that the short axis of your lips, that part, um, okay, this part right here is the short axis versus the long axis is gonna be the opposite way. So the short axis picks up the direction of your object, in this case, this cylinder, right? That's the short axis right there. Um, it's not like this, okay? Whatever, this could be something that's lying down like that, okay? See that? And this could be maybe something that's, yeah, just sitting on the ground like that, right? Um, but if I, if, I, if I draw an ellipse like this and then I project these lines like this, that, that can't be, that's maybe a flax flask rather, sorry. Um, so whatever you do in general, okay, in general, there's, there's gonna be exception, maybe you're drawing a flask, maybe you're drawing something that is like that, um, but always follow the main direction of your, of your object um, using the short end, okay? And projecting that to the length of your object. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a bunch now real quick. Um, yeah, you see, so I'm just do the drawing and then do the title block afterwards. Um, so just practice, practice, practice. I, I call it like this sort of landing, but not landing a little bit, but then taking off right away. Um, okay, so what I do is I, you know, I try to approach it. I don't do, I don't do anything, then I go. Now later we can, you know, we'll look at how to make this. It may be better depending if it's an actual object, but if you're just drawing the ellipse now, just, okay. So again, practice shallower ones, which are easier. And remember, if you're drawing an object that's sitting on the ground in front of you and that object is sitting on an horizontal plane, and you're looking down and you're standing also on a floor that's also horizontal and not like at some weird angle, like a slide in a playground or something. Um, that ellipse of this object is always gonna be like this. In other words, it's always gonna be um, with this axis parallel to your, maybe your paper, maybe your drawing, uh, and it's never gonna be like that. If that's the case, then it's sitting on something else that's a little bit of an angle, okay? Or maybe it's like sitting down like that. Right, and we'll see now that using cylinders, we'll see how that, that works out, okay? So just, I'm gonna just now fill it up. Um, okay. And maybe draw a few axes for some of them, maybe. Or maybe you could like darken just a couple to show that they're symmetrical. Um, if 
probably should move the paper if I'm trying to do that. Okay. And before we finish with the ellipses, um, you probably remember that as a geometric shape, you get an ellipse if you cross a plane at an angle with a cone, right? And then you look straight at it and that's an ellipse. Um, it's also the, um, the orbits of the planets around the sun, they're slightly elliptical, they're not very much, they're not like this, but they're, they're, they're ellipses. And uh, Mr. Newton, Sir, Sir Isaac Newton, Isaac Newton figured all those laws. And actually I'm gonna show you a quick trick um, that shows how to do a, a nice ellipse with a pencil and a string and two pins. And so you see Newton figured out that, well, he figured out that the, um, there's a lot of, the, I forget the, not the formulas, I shouldn't, I shouldn't talk physics as you talk drawing. <laughs> anyway, the cool thing about an ellipse is that you got two focuses instead of one, like in a circle uh, to center, so to speak. And um, these are the radiuses and the radiuses are always, the sum of the two radiuses is always the same. Okay. Uh, all right, there is, I think I remember that there is something how the area of this triangle describe different distances. Anyway, again, I shouldn't talk, I should just, I should just draw. Anyway, if you take, if you take a gadget like this, which is a loop and you put it onto two pins like that, and then you take a pencil, you might've seen this, then you can, you can try to draw a perfect ellipse. How about that? It's nice, isn't it? There's other ways to draw ellipses like folding paper and all of that, but I think I like this a lot because it's a, it's a really nice, um, and you can, um, so if you bring them closer, of course, it's gonna be more round, right? It's gonna get closer to being, the closer they get, the more you might get a circle. Now, I don't know if this will go off. Okay, no. Anyway, so that's a different ellipse now. Oops. Well, it's off the picture, but that's all right. Okay. But we make a little, a little smaller one. Uh, let's see what happens if I double it up. Yeah. So that's a an ellipse that's getting to be close to a circle. Okay. I'm gonna pause for just one second. Okay, hi everyone again. I just restarted the recording here and I'm sure that looked like a very nice um, jump cut with my body moving left to right. But anyway, I'm trying not to do much editing into this video. So I think you might be stuck with that. Um, I just wanna uh, show you again this book that I got on the internet. Um, and it's the uh, design course at the Basel School of Design. And um, there are some really nice things in it. This page about cylinders is actually interesting because on the right side, let me read the caption. At the beginning of the course, you can't really see it, it's here. At the beginning of the course, dimensional imagination and pictorial sensitivity may not be su sufficiently developed to avoid the common angle and proportion mistakes that appear in these four drawings. Now you might think, well, those are actually pretty good, aren't they? Well, it turns out mo the basic problem with all of them is that um, they in fact, the ellipses are in fact pointing in the, uh, in the wrong direction. So they're a little bit, they'll be say cylinders are a little bit squished as it were. Just quickly show you so that I feel bad because when I first saw them, I thought, oh, these are not bad. But actually, if you look closely and you draw, say, this ellipse right here, 
And then I draw the axis of this ellipse. Well, in this one, actually, it's close. I think this actually is okay. This one is not okay right here. So if I draw again the axis here, okay, you see that this short axis, right, which continues like this, should be going in the direction of this object, but it's not. Okay, so that's what's wrong there. And I think the same thing is happening here. Okay, so remember, um, when you draw your ellipses, always draw it uh, congruent, I guess would be the word, with the direction of your object. Okay, so that's also wrong. Okay. Um, this one is right here. Because now, mind you, don't get confused by the fact that what we might call, um, I guess what we could call this diagonals, the lips doesn't really have diagonals, but um, in other words, yeah, we, we tend to say, oh, shouldn't it match these diagonals of this cube? No, it doesn't matter, okay? As long as, as long as it's sort of, it's circumscribed, you know, inscribed in that, I'm gonna be good. And we're gonna do it now. Um, in this example, it's sort of like one point perspective. Um, and if you do perspective, it's, it's okay, even though I don't care now, I think we just, you know, we, we can pretend they're not in perspective. Um, so very quickly, I'll show you what this other book has. Um, and then in the third part of this video, we're gonna look at yeah, combining square shapes, cubic shapes with, with, um, with cylinders like this. Okay. Um, more examples where you can take a cube and an ellipse is sometimes useful to, um, kind of determine how the cube looks if you inscribe it in the square at the base of that cube, okay? Anyway, I'll just quickly show you these examples. What's nice about these is you see they all have physical models to look at. So, you know, if you have some things that are squares and cylinders, you probably do. Maybe it's a good idea to put them in front of your, of your table. Um, that's a nice combo of, of um, round shapes, cylindrical shapes, and cubic shapes. Whatever that was, probably by email. Um, okay, so let's try to do just cylinders now. I think I'll be a little faster in this part. What we should do is try to do at least one cylinder standing up, right? Like that, let's say, this would be, and then one cylinder maybe uh, going into different directions like that. Okay. Um, so, well, a simple way is to just draw two ellipses, right? Perhaps one on top of the other. Then joining them. Um, so if you remember, if you recall, you see how I joined them, but then I kind of fade and then I start because I start at the end again because it's hard to stop on a dime. Uh, and then maybe I darken this a little bit. See, I help myself by moving the paper around a lot actually. Um, yeah, maybe a little bit of a fade. Then I can go back. It's a little bit tapered. It's a little bit of a cone. So um, that's in part because I didn't um, create kind of a structure for it that would be perhaps a, uh, you know, perhaps a double cube. So what you could do is you could also, yeah, let's do that because that also helps us um, kind of talk about the direction of this 
of these cylinders, right? So that if I have, if I inscribed it in a, in a structure like this, I immediately, you know, start establishing uh, like the main direction of that object, right? So, Uh, if you draw also the median lines, these lines right here, uh, then it, that should help you locate the ellipse inside that. And again, really just practice, you know, you, you have to be a little bit, it helps actually st to stand up. Um, my, my desk here, it's a little bit low, but it's actually still a high desk uh, rather than being sitting down. I know it's not... Um, Everybody might have that, but anyway, so when I do that, you can see I start identifying these four spots, which are, you know, tangent to my, but however, the edges of your cylinders are here, right? So I'll do a few, okay. Um, And it's definitely hard to um, kind of go back in and try to darken it. You have to do sort of a quick, quick motion. Um, perhaps you could do very thin lines to, to show that. Notice that in this particular view, these lines overlap, right? So it, it's a little bit less um, to be. If you did a cube that was, um, Oh, let's do this other thing. So if you draw an ellipse like that, then you can play around with like your inscribing um, cube or cylinder or, or box um, because the same, the same ellipse, I suppose, you could treat different in terms of the angles, right? To the point that, you know, maybe I do this symmetrical, right? Now, in this case, both the everything is perfectly centered right um, so my diagonals here match the diagonals of the square match the axis of the ellipse right they go into these directions so i have noticed that here it starts to be a little bit funny and that's why you shouldn't get confused it's okay so my ellipse is still going you know, with my axis perfectly perpendicular to each other and also parallel to my drawing, right? Right? But notice that now they don't match anymore with the diagonals of that. See how they miss? And that's okay, right? That's okay, doesn't matter. Um, just always keep your lips going with those, with those axes. Again, of course, if, if it's meant to be a cylinder going up like a regular cylinder okay so same thing here see i draw the two axes like that and then again they don't match according to this but that's okay it's still important that they my short axis right here goes up straight that would be whatever my object is right um see how i, I move the paper again so, um, just finish this one off. Oh yeah, if you if you twist, you know, if you change the angles a little bit like this, then what we can do? Let's see if it, if this works. If I draw my median lines here, okay, then I can get, um, and this will help later with the bottle drawings, which we have coming up. So now those four lines um, are not overlapping like they were here, right? Now I see four of them here. I see two on top of two others. And this could be useful. Let's say if I do a quick, quick bottle, right? Of sorts, you know, maybe an old milk bottle. Like in those that they might have seen in. Actually, they didn't show the ball. They showed the big containers of milk in um, that show. What was it called? Um, 
all creatures, yeah, great and small. That was fun. Um, anyway, so anyway, the uh, what I was saying is that the contour lines you see would help define what this thing would look like. And I forget now if I've already talked about contour lines, but you know, maybe there is a little bit of a okay. So um, in terms of different directions, once again, if the object is going this way, if the object is going that way, if the object is going, meaning like if this is some kind of axis or axle, let's say maybe it's a car, then your wheels are gonna be going, well, unless they're turned, okay, let's assume they're straight. Um, they're going to be going with those, with that direction, okay? So let's see how would now if, Yeah, you wouldn't want this wheel to go this way, would you? Your car would probably get off the road super fast. Um, so let's try with the, maybe here. Yeah, let's say the car is here. I think it helps if one draws maybe the, let's assume that's a car there. Um, oh yeah, it is right, okay. I was getting confused by the, so the which one is in front and which one is a so this would be a car that is um, has the wheels here and the wheels there there's the car etc so here instead it would be the wheels would be this way very boxy car um Yeah, so the wheels would be this way. Okay. As opposed to, for example, being like that or being like that. Okay, this is probably the more common mistake to make them you know, maybe more straight. Um, so I guess the simple thing to do would be to maybe draw two cylinders or three, one straight and two at an angle like that. Um, I have a quick drawing here showing the, uh, yeah, well, the axis should always work, so. Like that. It's not showing very well. There we go. Okay. So I'll just I'll just do that. I will um, in order to again talk about those axes, I'm just going to first draw at different angles. Let's just call them some blocks. Okay. So maybe it's like this block. So that's one, and I'm gonna do one that is, and now I'm gonna yeah, use different angles. Assuming that I'm, I'm not assuming, but I'm you know trying to make them look like the, this part is square. Um, and then the other one perhaps, um, yeah, maybe the other one is a little even more. Let's see if I can do it without making it look not so good. Yeah, when, remember, this is the mistake I said to not do. <laughs> um, I ended up doing a square, right? That's not good, remember that? In other words, as soon as I see a square, there's no way that I'm gonna see the other two sides in that in that same way, right? Um, in other words, if I draw this like this,
this is a square, right? Well, if I turn my guy here, I might be able to match two, but the third is gonna go off, right? So yeah, avoid 90 degrees. It's so easy to make a mistake. Um, so that just means I need to lower my, and I just need to keep it a little, a little more relaxed. <laughs> Okay, so in these three, this is the main direction, right? This is the main direction, this is the main direction. So that means that my ellipses are gonna be, going this way, right? Also going this way. And here they're gonna go this way, right? Now I just draw this without any specific proportions because I have to fit them in this, right? So let's sit through that. And that is a bit it for this particular step. So it helps if you move the paper so that you put always the direction vertical, right? So that's, you know, with me like this, right? So let's go like that. Well, actually let's figure it out. It's not quite, somewhere here whatever it is this is the direction right so i'm gonna do it there without worrying about whether it hits here or not okay um then i'm gonna help myself with the uh, and then i'm gonna again trying to not even think okay am i trying to fit it in yes but don't worry about it just just make it so that you keep it symmetrical right like that. And only after you've done it, okay, well, then let's see if these points match. You see, they're not quite. That's how it should be, okay? And then, of course, you just take the tangent point there and there, okay? Uh, somewhere here is the other one. I'm just now going to quickly do it. Okay. So that's one. Um, you know, perhaps again, you might do a little bit of a line there to make it a little more 3D. Um, so let's try this one. Again, this is a case in which first you draw the center by doing diagonals like this. Okay. Then I draw my horizontal line because my horizontal line, I know it's going to be perpendicular to my vertical line. And then I draw my vertical line. And that's where I need to fit the ellipse regardless of how this is shaped, right? So the trick is to get it, um, kind of go against your sort of eye and think, oh, how come this, how come this is not all symmetrical? Well, just, just draw it symmetrical and then things will fall into place. Okay, so a little crooked because now I'm, I'm starting to get worried that the video is going to be too long. But hey, sorry. Like I, I like to say, I'm not the BBC. <laughs> and it's so true um, because you would need to edit them and, you know, plan them and. Um, that's it. So let's do one last one. And this is my axis. That's my other axis. So there it's going to be like that. And you can see this is a more fat ellipse. Sometimes, you know, if you're in a rush, you can also just kind of finish it off. You don't have to have the whole the whole complete structure there. Um, however, your your verticals on, on your other things should stay correctly vertical, right? So this should stay like that, which is gonna give you these points wherever they might happen to fall on your, on your lips, okay? okay? I'll 
I'll stop that now for another second. Hi, okay, that was another jump cut. Um, before I do the third exercise, I actually wanna show you one drawing from the same book um, because it's gonna be actually one of the um, topics at the very, very end where you can pick um, two drawings out of four and one is gonna be a wooden toy if you can find one, a simple one. I just wanna show you this one that they have in this book, which is super, super nice showing how they build it from scratch, you know, from sort of the basic um, structure. And these, of course, well, no, I shouldn't say of course, but I believe they have the actual toy somewhere. Um, yeah, there it is, right there. It's a nice steam roller, it looks like, um, of sorts. So yeah, so you can see, we're just applying here, or they were, the same things I just went over with the, um, and these drawings again are really nice because I always forget, but they use lighter pencils but they're very, very light in the construction and then they go darker. These joints are also quite big. Um, you can see them in the, uh, in the classroom here where they're all, well, actually not huge, but certainly bigger than the one we're working on right now. Um, okay, so that was just a glimpse of what you might wanna do towards the end. Um, and so this third thing is really just how we can put perhaps two shapes, that one is cylindrical and one uh, the cubical together to make a shape, another shape, okay? So I'll just, uh, maybe I'll just take this as an example. And again, I can't quite show it to you on the side there, cause it would fall. I'm gonna, I'm just going to uh, build it up. Um, but before I do that, I'm actually going to, um, do another quick exercise with um, curves and cylinders, uh, kind of carved out out of out of cubes. Or another way, um, and the, uh, those things that Apple, you know, Apple products—they're all rounded in all corners. So let me just quickly show you how we might we might do that. Another exercise that you could do without you know without even thinking about you know connecting to things like this. Um, and that is to basically maybe draw a, a cube. Okay, I'm trying to be light now, even though these pencils are pretty soft. Um, and then try to now to practice this idea of the, um, of the directions. Well, it helps again to do those divisions, which you already did in the other exercise. Um, Yeah, you can see this, see my, can you see that? How my axis to be correct, which it is now, doesn't match my corners here, but that's okay. So now I'm just going to draw an ellipse here. Right, and again, I've extended my arm. I'm kind of trying to work from my shoulder and my elbow, but not from my wrist at all, um, because it would be hard to do it with your wrist, right? You can't. Your wrist is almost like a compass too. You would get a more of a circle. Um, oh yeah, again, if you want to do a circle, sorry. Getting sidetracked, but it's always fun to try to do a perfect circle. Many circles, I should say. Okay, so, so I'm, I'm now doing the same thing, right? I'm finding that axis, finding the opposite axis. And then I'm, and this is almost like a sort of almost like a spherical dice. Um, and the top is just pretty straightforward. Okay. So what you could do then is like, you could connect this to make it look like it's a, it's a solid, right? So this is very useful to, um, then you could refine them and make them a little darker. Um, it's very useful whenever you have an edge and in fact, it is curved, okay? Um, 
A little more elaborate one would be um, one where the corners, just the corners are rounded, but not like, not the edge here. So for that, what you might do is you might um, divide your, your cube into four by four instead of just two by two, okay? And when you do that, I'm getting a little sloppy here. I want you to notice, by the way, that I'm not, I mean, I'm not that perfect, right? I hope you notice that. So don't feel, you know, there's no value judgment. It's just a matter of, you know, getting what works. Um, so, so yeah, don't be afraid to make mistakes because even though I'm not one of those people that said that there are no wrong answers, there are definitely many wrong answers. Um, but in this case, you know, you can just, you can just not worry. Okay. So anyway, what I'm going to do now is actually put ellipses just in these corners. So my circles are going to be half the size like this. Um, again, see how it's, it's easy to get a, so what I'll do, maybe I'll just do one face so that this video really doesn't get that long. Okay. And after I do that, you see, I identify these spots right here. And these are my tangent points where I'm going to connect now. Like that. So if I finish this, this would be more like a kind of a common dice. So, and then these are the parts of the ellipse that I, that's a little tricky. <laughs> the tight corners are harder to draw than the open ones. Okay, so this might be part of uh, one of those Apple chargers, right? Um, I would have to repeat the, the process in the back. I'm gonna do it quickly now because I, Again, I don't want to make the videos too long. But there's some shortcuts and maybe some others that are not. Let's see, this is, let's see. If I rush, I lose it because I don't know where I am anymore. So if I project that to there, then from there to there. Okay. Um, See, it's always good. It's always good to project these guys right there so that we can pick it up. This would be the opposite there. Um, and it's good to like kind of let go or let the paper have it or let the pencil have it. So I could really, if I wanted to now, you know, get that feel that we had in those drawings. Again, notice it's really hard to just do this beginning at one point and end at the other all the way. You have to do bits, but I'm fading them um, from the points that are hard to, I'm, I'm sort of starting from the points that are hard to stop at. So instead I start there. So I start at the, and I go towards the middle. Yeah, okay, I think this is a little bit big compared to that, right? It's a little bit, um, anyway, this might be, you know, forget something, you know, maybe it could be on USB, which would be maybe shorter, but okay. Um, so yeah, you could practice cubes that then have the ellipses in them, right? On the faces rather. And so the um, so it helps to always construct them in such a manner, right? Because because this gives you you know like a yeah like a grid in a way, right? Uh, if you recall in the in the book, there was a some kind of a maybe it was a church or something. But let's assume now that we want to do yeah that we want to put a cylinder on this, so we could say okay, what if this is square there, right? And then it becomes like a little element there. 
And then here there's perhaps a cylinder that is you know, twice as small. Um, And right now we're just intersecting um, cylinders with, well, square parts that are perpendicular, right? Um, you could also do a cylinder inward, right? So you could do a cutout. Um, so in other words, kind of a negative extrusion. Now it's hard to show because now you would need shading, right? Which I'm saying, uh, don't worry about that, but... Um, Let's see, how, how could we show it? Oh, I know, we could do a, a few contour lines. So I could come down like that and then maybe go like this. And now I get an, a sense that perhaps these things, you know, and then this perhaps would be like that. See that? Um, so it gives you, gives you an idea that it's going inside. Let's do one more and then we'll finish the video. So why don't we just practice, um, yeah, maybe one, a big one. So for this one, you could have a big one, maybe smaller sketches, but let's, the main, I think the main thing is to really keep this axis correct. Right, so whatever you do, it's not so much a cube. And to, to locate something like a cylinder here that's perhaps going in, again, always do maybe a diagonal. That will give you the center, which would then give you the other spots. And now I'll just simply, bring a cylinder out of that, right? So again, I'm moving my paper so that I can keep it like that vertical. And maybe I do one over here. I'm just gonna connect it. Again, I start at the endings and I go in like that. So we're gonna be doing after this drawing, the ball and for that I already have videos. So, well actually it's the same video as the carton. Um, and with the other video that also has cylinders and cubes you should even have to do on these next two drawings. Um, let's see. Maybe this is an old camera or something, I don't know. So let's just say maybe we make one corner round or maybe two corners. No, let's make this one because let's make, let's make these two rounds. So I, I try to determine again where I would want my curve. So I am gonna split now into this grid, okay? So what I wanna do is round off these corners right here. So I'll do the circles here. I mean, sorry, the ellipses. So this becomes the corner there. And I try to repeat that shape down below here. Here, of course, it disappears, but uh, you can see that already. Let's see, it's a lot. It's, it looks like I've lost a lot of it, so it might not look like it's center anymore, but it is because actually not. It's a little bit confusing, right? So let me just put some lines here, line there. Anyway, this is, this is where my edge here is right here, right? So in other words, in that scenario, Mm 
the part that I'm really using is just this, just this part right here. And then the line is gonna come down here. So it's this spot, so it comes out here. And now it looks a little bit off because it looks a little bit towards that side because the curve here, you know, is being shown in front. So, but I think it's okay. It, it gets better if I do these lines, right? Then it looks more. Okay, so you can have fun with this. You can, you can, I don't know, maybe design something else. Um, I'm just going to now finish up this drawing a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. I could decide that there is maybe another cutout here. Always, you see, always do your ellipses and then use those parts of the ellipse that you need um, for your object. Uh, later, we're going to do drawings that are going to be more geometric, more, well, actually, a lot of them are going to be freehand too, but there's going to be a little more um, precision. These this look messy, but that's okay, right? Um, again, a few contour lines to sort of define the shape. So if I pick this line here, and this could be lighter. Oh. See that? So just, just trying to give it, notice how I am. It's hard to really show this, uh, this curve here, right? It's, it's really tricky. Um, we could do a little shade, but uh, I don't want to go there now. And after a while, maybe you stop and you look, oh, does that look good? I don't know. I don't know what this looks like. Um, <laughs> maybe not so good, but but you can see I can change pencil perhaps, so I get a sharper pencil. Um, just try to. This is actually a harder pencil, so I don't know if that was a good choice. Um, like a Pinocchio almost. <laughs> if I do the eyes, remember, how do I do the eyes? I have to put it like that and see, I was making them wrong. I was doing that, but in fact, I need to do this. I have to locate it. It's actually here. Yeah, this is a little weird. They would have to be going around. Okay, I'm not going to try to do that. Um, okay, I'm just going to stop now. So this was the cylinder and the cube. And um, sorry, this video is a little long, but it is for three drawings. So next up. Okay, thanks. See you next time. <laughs>